but Notre Dame, right in the center of Paris. And it really is, uh, you know, they were even saying it on the news yesterday, ground zero. It is right in the center of Paris. On the Ile de la Cité, you know, Paris has two parts. And in the middle of Paris, where the Seine River runs, there are two islands. Notre Dame is right on that Ile de la Cité, um, between two sides of the river. And that is uh, where everywhere else in France, I believe, you measure, sort of measure how far you are from there. So it's just really like um, uh, the midpoint of all of France, um, certainly the middle of Paris. Um, I loved the stained glass windows in there. I took a lot of pictures of the stained glass just because they're so intricate and they have lots of stories and they're beautiful. And then, you know, you would hear stories of all these Parisians just lined up on both sides of the river watching this uh, conflagration and just weeping because uh, it's, I mean, uh, anybody that's been there, first of all, if you've been to Paris, I mean, it's a, it's a gorgeous place and it's right in the middle. If you come from either side of the river, you see this cathedral, and it's, it's really just um, remarkably just beautiful vista when you see it and have that just being destroyed right in front of you. Notre Dame is sort of the, it is the home of Catholicism for France. Um, it's one of the first cathedrals that utilizes the flying buttress method of architecture. So you have those big, I don't know, they kind of look like nets coming from the sides of the cathedral. And what's that, what that's supposed to symbolize? It's, it's kind of fascinating. It's supposed to symbolize the nets of the fishermen that, that Jesus calls um, when he says, come after me and I will make you fisher, fishers of men. Well, it is the central, probably the most well-known cathedral in France, as well as the largest. And it goes back to the 13th century in its present form. And I think it's one of the great symbols of Paris the capital of France. History and culture, I mean, the, the cathedral just looms large. I mean, uh, if you know Victor Hugo, um, uh, his novel about Notre Dame uh, with uh, Quasimodo, the, the hunchback of Notre Dame and all this, you know, I mean, it's really one of the great, really well-loved novels. Um, uh, that was from the 19th century. Um, but I mean, the, the cathedrals lived through all this period of French history, uh, the revolution, when it came close to being destroyed uh, by the revolutionaries, um, then it wasn't used for a while. Um, but it survived World War One, World War Two, um, you know. And then and this is kind of um, ironic to see it uh, destroyed out of nowhere. I mean, who knew that that was going to happen? All of a sudden, it's it's burning. It's to say this, but I I can't think of a better. A, a more symbolic image of the Catholic Church within France, the capital C Church, not lowercase c Church, so the whole the community as a whole. France recently has really um, they've they've lost their Catholic identity, and that's been seen for hundreds of years, not just within uh, with, within these past few years. And the fact that the most recognizable part of that church is remaining standing, it has to it has to say something about the longevity and the, um, the, the, the sheer willpower of the community of, of Catholics within France that no matter what happens to the country, no matter what the church goes through in France, it's always going to remain standing because the, the most solid structures are still standing. So, President Macron, I mean, I, I haven't really been listening to the news, but I did hear a little clip that Macron came out right away committing the national resources of France to rebuilding it. I'm, I'm certain they're going to have massive uh, support for that on an international level, and uh, I, I would, I should think that they will respond to it very appropriately, and and it also gives you a certain opportunity, I think, to shore up other cathedrals because the the roofs of these cathedrals are really the great danger for them, and I think many of them are like that. That they continue construction and especially the Catholic Church has a big role in it. I think that's something a lot of people are confused as to why a lot of people are donating a ton of money like the United States when the Catholic Church can't step in and give some of its, its worth like billions of dollars. So. 
As a historian, I just hope that it makes people understand that these structures, like you said, are not something we can take for granted. Take similar structures and we look at this instance and think, how can I look at this and appreciate it more and learn more about its history? The whole point of, of Jesus' message, and I think the whole point of Catholicism, is that those churches symbolize the beauty of of religion and of God and our love of God, um, but we don't need them. And, that, and that, that sounds a little a little harsh to say, but we have the people, and that's something that we need to take a step back and just think about and remind ourselves, rather than immediately go to all right, let's start rebuilding. But I think we're missing the the whole point in that it's supposed to show us that we are just trying in our. It, in as limited as humans are, we are trying our best to capture the beauty and magnificence of God within art, within architecture.